Well, human trials have begun in the United States of an experimental brain implant developed by a company founded by Elon Musk. Musk says the first patient has already been fitted with the Neuralink chip and is doing well. Now, the chip communicates with a computer to help people with disabilities or amputations operate mobility devices. Trials were approved last year, but Neuralink has faced calls for more scrutiny of its safety procedures. I'd like to welcome Professor Marcello Yankin now. He conducts research on the ethically sustainable development of AI systems and neurotechnologies at the Technical University of Munich. Welcome to you. Uh, tell us, please, how exactly does this brain chip work? Well, thanks for having me. So this brain-computer interface establishes a direct communication pathway between the brain of a patient with a neurological condition and an external computer device. And Neuralink is uh, uh, involved in the two technologies that are relevant here. The brain-computer interface itself, so this technology that enables this, this patient, presumably a patient with quadriplegia, so with the paralysis of all four limbs, to control uh, a computer device with brain activity, but also of the telesurgery robot uh, that also Neuralink is producing, which is the robot that is used to implant the device into the patient's brain. So there's a real opportunity here, if, if I understand how you're describing it, to, to really help people. There is, um, there is some real clear benefits with this. Yes, absolutely. Um, we should remember that neurological disorders are a major component of the global burden of disease. Uh, and we cannot cure what we cannot measure. So we need to develop this kind of neurotechnologies to understand the functioning of the human brain and to develop a tailored solution for the hundreds of millions of people worldwide who are suffering from disorders of uh, the brain and disorders of the mind. Mm. How safe is it? Well, this is hard to tell because as you rightly mentioned in, before, this is a first in human trial. This means this is the first time a human was implanted with this particular technology produced by Neuralink. However, um, we have um, good data that suggests that the procedure is safe. Uh, this is because before uh, obtaining an approval uh, from the FDA for a uh, first human trial, Neuralink had to produce evidence that the device was safe and effective in animal models. So they have conducted extensive research in uh, monkeys and other animal models. Uh, there was also a release of a video involving a pig uh, that shows uh, a relatively high degree of uh, safety uh, and efficacy. And also we should remember that this is not the first time that uh, a brain implant has been implanted in a human. Uh, in fact, um, the very first brain implant was implanted in a human back in 1998. So it's 26 years ago. Uh, but this doesn't mean that the technology is not innovative. Uh, in this last uh, two to three decades, uh, brain-computer interfaces have made incredible progress. Uh, but this is cumulative progress. So I think we can have a good confidence that the procedure is safe based on the preclinical data and also based on data that we obtained from similar technologies that were used before. So the technology has been progressing sort of gradually over the last couple of decades. I, I want to ask you a question, and I don't want to be flippant when I ask this, but uh, if I have a chip in my brain, can someone hack into that and, and make me do something that I, I don't want to do? Well, the short answer is yes, of course. Um, anything that is connected to a computer is vulnerable to the same risks that a computer is vulnerable to. Um, so if you connect a brain to a computer, you make a brain uh, vulnerable to the risk of a computer, including hacking. Um, and this is, in fact, is something that has been proven in experimental models. Uh, that being said, uh, the risk uh, of uh, this uh, of a hacking attack, for example, to happen to uh, a patient uh, using this kind of uh, implant is relatively low because the mm -hmm. technology is not widespread. Uh, and also uh, the benefits and the risk should be balanced against each other. And here the therapeutic benefit uh, clearly outweighed the risk. Fascinating talking to you. Thank you so much, Marcello Yanka, Professor of the Ethics of AI and Neuroscience at the Technical University of Munich. Thank you very much. Thank you. So this all sounds very sci-fi. Uh, DW uh, science reporter Fred Schwaller is here to uh, talk us through it. Welcome, Fred. So tell us more about what, it, what this actually does. So Neuralink aims to help people, help patients with severely damaged nervous systems. 
It tries to help them communicate or move or, for example, speak again. So this affects patients with paralysis or with quadriplegia or with severe blindness. So these devices could really be life-changing for some of these patients. The chip itself, um, it, it's, it's made of over a thousand electrodes. These electrodes record what's called um, neural signals. This is brain activity inside the brain, how it communicates. It translates this brain activity and then sends it to a computer device like a prosthetic limb or a, a computer which has um, text or communication um, devices, which helps the patient to interact with the world. Now, Neuralink themselves, um, they are working with patients with paralysis and quadriplegia. And the Neuralink is, is actually implanted into an area of the brain which controls movements. This is called the motor cortex. And inside the motor cortex, there are neural signals which move my hand or my leg. And the Neuralink device records this, intercepts it, and sends it to a computer or a prosthetic device. So it's like the patient is controlling the device with their mind via the chip. Right. And just to be clear, we only have, as far as I understand, Elon Musk's word for it that this is actually going on. Correct. Um, so this was approved back in September by, by approval regulatory boards. However, Musk only tweeted last night that this is something which has happened, so we're, it's, it's yet to be verified by publications and by studies. That said, this technology has been around for a bit. Correct. It's been around for several decades. Um, so actually, yeah, Neuralink are not the first people here. They've been working since 2016 on developing their chip. Um, however, as early as 1978, there have been researchers working with patients and they, for example, um, implanted a brain chip in a patient with severe blindness, and this brain chip allowed them to experience light again for the first time. Okay, so we're talking about when, we when, you, when you say life-changing, that's, that's no overstatement if the technology is working. Correct, yes. So, it, I mean, it's also to do with who is going to be affected by this. This could be only affecting a very small number of people with, in special cases with very severe disabilities due to injuries. These technologies are not designed yet for wider clinical use and certainly not for people without serious damage to their nervous systems. OK. Uh, he's claimed, uh, Elon Musk, that, that Neuralink could be used to download memories or provide supervision. Really? Well, this is very much science fiction and it's, it's related to the rhetoric which Elon Musk often does. So we're not even close to achieving this. Neuralink cannot read your thoughts, it cannot read your mind or your emotions. Um, only things which I said before, which were more basic neural signals of a motor plan, which, which is helpful for their clinical sense. Um, so neuroscientists don't really know how the brain encodes an emotion or, or a thought, and we certainly can't use devices to detect them in that very specific way. So these are not, not brain... Not yet. Not yet, potentially in the future. But they're, 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 it, it's something which is ongoing research, but it will take decades to get to this point. Um, uh, and so the people that, who, who could potentially benefit from this then, mm. who? What sort of um, injuries? So, like I said, so it could be um, people with severe um, quadriplegia or paralysis. These are usually traumatic injuries, so car crashes, for example. They might have um, uh, lesions or damage to their spinal cord, which actually prevents the information going from the brain to the muscles. So really, the, the interface is helping these very specific cases of people with very specific damage to their nervous system. So like I said, they're, they're not helping um, the wider population um, or people with less severe damage to their nervous system. OK, thanks for talking us through that, uh, Fred. Uh, DW's uh, Fred Schwaller. Thank you.